Around eight months ago, I was a salesman in a busy leisure center, as some of you know. One day I was sat in the office just down the corridor from the gym with my two colleagues, Sky and Jess, who were around 21 years old at the time and both very attractive young women, if I may say so. One day a young man came in for a tour of the gym because he was thinking of joining up for the membership so he walked into the office, introduced himself to Jess, she stood up, introduced herself back and then gave him a tour around the gym for the next 20 minutes. Now this guy clearly took a liking to Jess. He was probably around the same age as her, 21. He was dressed well, looked sharp and spoke articulately. Jess has long blonde hair and a beautiful smile warm enough to soften any man's heart. I was sat on my desk on the right of Jess's on the phone to a customer as I heard their footsteps come back down the corridor and then come back into the office. Jess sat down by her desk with this guy in front of her and she began to pitch the membership to him and it looked like she had him sold. I continued the phone call I was on until I finished the call with the customer, put it down and sat there looking at my screen. But when I turned to my left to see how the interaction was going, I saw this young man do the Andrew Tate pose with one leg over the other, staring intently into Jess's eyes, completely devoid of emotion. Five minutes later, Jess walked with him out of the center, asked if he had any more questions. He said, can I get your number and take you out on a date? She said no, lied and said she had a boyfriend, came back and told us in the office. And since this happened about a year ago, it's lived in my mind rent free because I couldn't help but cringe whilst looking at this guy. Not just because he was doing the Andrew Tate pose, but because he clearly liked Jess, but he would have scored at least a minus two on a charisma rating. He was too serious and made no effort to make the interaction lighthearted and everyone could feel the tension and the seriousness oh, in the room. There is it. Also, that always loses it. So where is it? Where can I find it? Where the bloody hell is Wait. that? Wait. What are you doing? I'm just looking for your charisma. There's no doubt, us young men are confused. Pulled in a multiplicity of directions which vibrate between pursuing women and maximizing our looks, to shunning the world of love and women and fully focusing on ourselves and going into monk mode, it's safe to say, we're damned if we do, damned if we don't. If we looks max to pursue women, we're feminine. If we knuckle down to focus on ourselves, we're selfish. It seems we just can't win. Through this lens, as a man, it would be understandable to whip your finger out and point it at society and blame an external force. After all, it's society and the algorithms which are promoting these confusing messages, right? Right. But, although it's understandable, blaming an external source won't get you much further than turning you into a whining man-child beset with the thought that some external force is out to get him and plague his life. Instead, you must turn your focus into how complicit you are in the nature of your suffering and you must take radical responsibility if you want the peace of mind you're searching for. Nowadays, us young men, we're told to grip life by the throat. We're told to maximise every area of our lives and we're told to never settle for anything less than the highest value. We're told to get, achieve and accrue all of the material possessions which seemingly lead to success. And although I believe there's a time and place for these messages and I would never sit here stand here and say men should never pursue excellence in their lives. I would never say that. But the difference between being serious and sincere in your life isn't how involved you are in the tasks you're doing, but in how tightly you grip. All activities in life, whether you're approaching a girl, dancing with your missus, building your business, working on yourself through self-improvement, balancing on a beam or floating in a pool of water require the right amount of effort but not more otherwise you'll start to get in your own way and too many young men are getting in their own way nowadays because they're putting the wrong amount of effort in they want attention from women but because they've only ever learned how to grip onto reality they have no idea how to let go when on a first date with a woman and be themselves channeling the authenticity which counterintuitively makes you more attractive In one of his standout lectures, the British philosopher Alan Watts implored his audience to be sincere, not serious. We thought of life by analogy with a journey, a pilgrimage, which had a serious purpose at the end, and the thing was to get to that end, success or whatever it is, maybe heaven after you're dead, but we missed the point the whole way along. It was a musical thing, and you were supposed to sing or to dance while the music was being played. 
Although our boy Alan didn't go into too much detail about what he meant by this, allow me to illustrate this further. First of all, let me borrow your imagination for a moment. Let's say you're at a social gathering with your friends and you're about to sit down and play a board game with three of your friends and a plus one who one of your friends has brought. And this plus one has decided to take charge of the evening. Before you play, he's read the instructions twice, he's read them out loud once just to clarify that everyone understands the rules of the game, and when you start playing the board game, he's completely silent because he's dialed in, laser focused on winning this game. He takes every move as seriously as possible and everyone can feel the tension in the room and feels incredibly uncomfortable. After you play the game and leave that gathering, would you likely remark, oh, that was a really good time, or would you probably never want to go to a social gathering where plus ones were invited ever again. The word serious, etymologically, etymolog the word serious, etymologically, has roots from the early 15th century. There are many links to this word, such as from the old French serious, which means grave or earnest, Latin serious, which means weighty, Lithuanian severu, to weigh, lift, and Old English swayer, heavy. Pretty sure that's not how you pronounce it, but anyway. So through an etymological lens, the idea that seriousness is taxing in the same way as lifting heavy weights is taxing on your muscles stretches across cultures. The word sincere, however, has roots from the Latin word sincerus, which means pure, unmixed, unadulterated. Also meaning something which is truthful, free from falsehood and deceit. Think of the people you love to be around when you're in a social situation. They likely have an air of being unapologetically themselves whilst being notoriously fun. Now imagine you're about to dance with a woman. Think of the qualities the dance would adopt if you were to approach it with seriousness. Your body would likely be tense, rigid and stiff, and the woman you're dancing with would be able to feel this. The result of your seriousness when dancing would likely zap the enjoyment out of the moment for both you and your dance partner. You'd be too caught up in your own head about mastering the techniques or how you look to others or whether you're making a fool of yourself to actually let go and express yourself fully. So as young men, we don't need more reasons to hate ourselves or more reasons to compare ourselves to people much older than us who are screaming into a microphone telling us to put maximal effort into every area of our life which inevitably builds tension and zaps our life of the meaning and fulfillment and rapture and bliss we're inevitably searching for. We need to learn how to let go of who we think we should be, what we think we should be doing, or what effort we think we should be putting in. So we can tune into who we could be, the effort we could be putting in, or what we could be doing. Because should implies a social obligation, could implies potential. And most importantly, we need to understand we don't need work, we don't need women, we don't need intimacy, but we can engage in these things anyway from a place of abundance and fullness in order to give our gifts to the world with a cheeky grin on our face instead of a serious look of pent up tension. To round this off and to make this practical, here are some ways you can practically reduce the seriousness in your life and replace it with sincerity. Number one, first of all, I would encourage you to tune in to the feeling of seriousness throughout your day-to-day -day endeavors. For example, when do you feel most serious? What activities make you more tense? What states of mind promote seriousness? What aspects of your life feel heavy, tight, constrained. Number two, and perhaps the most counterintuitive practical suggestion I would give you, I implore you to turn up the feeling of seriousness in your life in the same way as if you were an actor in a comedy play. Go so far over the top with your feelings of seriousness and see if your perspective shifts a little bit. Can you find some levity in the depths of your seriousness? Because oftentimes confusion arises because we don't feel emotions to their depths. So go all in on your seriousness and then come back. Don't stay there. Number three, memento mori. Keep in mind every single day, at every single moment you possibly can, that we will all die. Treat every single day as if you'll die that evening and waking up the next day will be a bonus. And when you live from that state of mind, you'll see how many serious things become trivial right before your eyes. Number four, last one, books to read. The Wisdom of Insecurity by Alan Watts. Blue Truth by David Dada. I've recommended that before. And any fiction book any hobby which you're not trying to get an outcome or look good or perform well in it. Fiction where you're not trying to accrue knowledge in your mind or an italic hobby where you do it for the bliss of doing it and you don't care about doing it in front of others and appear in a certain way because of the outcome it's given you. So yeah, victory sweet. Be sincere, not serious. Oh, I forgot to show the skull when I said memento mori. Oh well. 
stay disciplined and playful.